bragging. I'm I'm actually making a threat right now. I I, 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 no, no, because here's the I'm deal. Here. <laughs> here's the deal. I'll know if there's fuckery. And, and so any engagement I've ever had with agencies, they know too, that I will know if there's fuckery. I'll find out if there's an active investigation. Of course, there are active investigations into what George Knapp and I have released and good for them. It's an important job. The idea that if people leak stuff, you got to plug those leaks. I get it. But as a journalist, the First Amendment, the idea of freedom of press mm -hmm. for public good. So I feel maybe I'm ignorant, but I feel protected because everybody I've ever talked to in agencies, their biggest fear is that other countries will compromise, will blackmail so they can get shit before I vetted it for national security. I've never done nothing wrong. Okay. What about all these threats and danger? Is it all from the U.S. government or other other entities? Or Yeah, man, it, it's it's really dynamic. So I'm going to try to answer you like really directly. Um, I have to be, I have to dance a little bit, but I'm trying to answer you really directly. There are many interests to, and I'm going to say this real clear, shape the emerging UAP narrative. In quotes, imagine that in a document from an intelligence agency. Okay. So what that means is the, the threats are like, well, is my family going to be okay? Am I going to lose a clearance? Right. So for people that are in the military, you know, will I be defamed to the point like they tried with David Grush where no one's going to hire I the guy? always buy someone representing the U.S. government. I mean, so, it's not like Elizabeth Warren's assistant so no. is coming after you, no. right? So, so no. Yeah, so because who, who be are the home? holders of the secrets? Remember, a lot of this technology is, is said to be, have been put into private industry. So think like you think about like big tobacco. I mean, they did some diabolical shit to people that were blowing the whistle. Yeah. This is more important and bigger than that. So when you move something into private industry, they have their own kind of rules of engagement. So is it always the U.S. government? No, most everybody in the U.S. government wants to know what's going on. But when you move things into private industry and you give them power, they can operate by different rules. Now, of course, they are defense contractors, right? But that that those threats, that pressure shut up, silence, don't talk about this, we're going to mock you. It comes from mechanisms within private industry, it feeds down to social media, and then people are co-opted by our intelligence agencies. Do you remember Project Mockingbird that came out uh, back in the day in Congress? Sounds vaguely familiar. It's where they opt journalists, where they grab them, they pay them, or they threaten them. The CIA was doing this, and this is like not a conspiracy, this is like a real thing that happened and it came out back in the day with a, a, a very important event that occurred in Congress, which we'll talk about later, but that is real and that happens. Now, personally, I have something wrong with my brain. I am just, I dropped my last fuck a long time ago. I am not going to endanger national security, but I am definitely going to pursue this and tell the truth. David Grush is the guy who we all saw testify in front of Congress yeah. <clears throat> saying that they, they have uh, non-human bio, biologics. Oh, yeah. You got it. Meaning, non -human. Meaning, meaning that he testified under oath that the U.S. government is in possession of actual anonymous aircraft plus non-human biologic meaning like uh effectively alien, entities alien pilots of the craft that we have obtained our government specifically the dia the head of the dia program <coughs> defense What's intelligence the DIA? so the dia is an intelligence agency it's called the defense intelligence agency it was admitted that they had a UFO program. You heard about it in the New York mm -hmm. Times. They called it a different name, but you heard about it. That was the 2017 article. Yeah, a tip they called it, right? But the, the main program, the mother program was called OSAP. I had the head of the DIA UFO program come on my podcast with George Knapp called Weaponized, mm -hmm. and he admitted that they had a craft, that they obtained a craft, just one, he admitted to one, and that they breached the whole of it. It wasn't made by us, wasn't China, wasn't Russia. So they call it non-human intelligence, right? Because we're not exactly sure, or I'm not exactly sure, where the, the pilots or the operators of the craft are from. But that is fact. He got authorized to say it through a DOPSER request, which just means he asked the government, hey, what can I talk about? You know, I'm writing books. So, But he admitted it on the show. And I'll tell you something about the craft. 
and why I think they're not from here, from Earth, is because the structure, the way they're built, they are capable of beyond interstellar travel. So anybody that's ever worked in these programs who I do continue to talk to, who are currently in them, and people that have been in them say the craft themselves are capable of, you say faster than speed, faster than light, but it, that's not the case. They're gravitationally propelled. So they warp space time, but they're capable structurally of moving, you know, within solar systems and beyond. Well, what's the leading theory on where aliens are from? Well, the, the leading theory from the people that actually work in these UFO reverse engineering exploitation programs for derivative technologies, wow. unpack that shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> what they say is that they get conflicting ideas, meaning there might be more than like one group of other people from other places coming here. So it could be all of the above in the kitchen sink. I don't know. That's what this is all about. If this is real, let's start talking about it. The original reason for not only the secrecy, but the laugh factor, you know, making people, smart people don't talk about this. Uh -huh. They never said they didn't exist. If you go back to the old interviews that you see in the series, they start with these like news segments. Uh -huh. They always say they're not a threat to national security, whatever they are. They're not saying they don't exist. Now the government has admitted they do exist. I mean, or whoever discovers how to replicate this tech they fucking win. Game over. They will be the power, most powerful nation on planet Earth instantaneously. You know how the atom bomb it was a, it was it was used to stop the war. That was that was the idea, right? Yeah. You show the power, everybody pauses, humanity pauses and they go, "Oh shit. Let's not keep doing this." So whoever gets the ability to replicate these propulsion systems it can be weaponized. And if you have a weapon like that, it's game over. So if I was the government, I'd be like, holy shit, we already got the mechanisms in place because of the atomic program to keep this shit compartmentalized and secret. I mean, I, I would say even less than that. I mean, because pilots are seeing them every day. I get calls every day from people that it would shock the world. It would shock people to know who's had direct contact with these UFOs. Uh, it would really shock people and, and they're never coming forward ever <clears throat> because that laugh factory, because, you know, they'd be ridiculed. They're not wrapped so tight. Well, luckily, that's a 50s mentality. We're now at the point where you can say, OK, I've seen something. But when you have footage, infrared, thermal, when you have radar and it's not just Uncle Jim anymore in his airplane being like, I saw something. Now the sensor systems, the sensor packages are becoming so just um, powerful that we can capture these things and get so much more data. That's why you're seeing a lot of military footage from me. We are seeing better footage of UFOs. They're being leaked to me. They are thermal, infrared. They are in spectrums of light that are layered. There's something called full motion video, which layers all these spectrums together in color at night. Your iPhone can't do that yet. So as we progress with technology, and thank you for letting me explain this and do this rant, your patience, I appreciate it. We're on cosmic time. You, thank you, we are. <clears throat> You're going to fucking see a lot more, man. They're everywhere. Yeah. The, the, the pesky thing about UFOs is they won't go away. There was something under the water. For sure. There, it was docking. They were docking, was the word told me. It was something, a USO under the water can they have they tracked them moving at high speed underwater yes 100 percent. so there's the resistance of the water isn't an issue correct is this the one oh. where the tic tac video actually has there are four more minutes of the video that's that the, it's gimbal. Not, uh, the gimbal i'll explain video. to you the difference 2015 was the gimbal 2004 was the tic tac in 2015 was the gimbal and the go fast those releases the gimbal is that one that mechanically rotates against the wind and you hear the pilot saying like holy shit 120,000 there's, there's a fleet of them yeah right so what he's saying and i know to be true is that in that footage where you see the gimbal rotating it looks like the bob lazar flying saucer i mean it's like shaped like a saucer when it rotates in front of it is, I think, five other objects that were kind of like, um, what do you call it when you when you you go along like a caravan, a UFOs or something, escorts, right? A they're, flock. They're, a flock. I don't know what you call it, like a, a flock of UFOs. A flap. Um, yeah. So 
there, there, it, there were on that day, there were other UFOs in front of that one. And there's four extra minutes of footage that hasn't been released to the public. And again, I'm not in a position to release that. I do believe that if we put enough pressure, maybe the DOD and the government will declassify. People say that's prep in the battlefield. Some people say they're studying us. Look, we're the greatest show in the solar system, planet Earth. I mean, come on, man. We got it all. War, fucking fighting the Kardashians. We got everything, right? So why wouldn't you watch us? Now, do you go up to an ant hill and do you like talk with the ants? No, you, you know, you study them. What do you do to cattle? You feed them, you water them, you give them antibiotics and you fucking eat them. So yeah. I don't know what is going on, but I do know that there is direct contact with a lot of people who eat the same way. Mm -hmm. Where I'm standing, I mean, in my email, like pull it up right now. It's like, it's like a slot machine of encounters and it is not the only structural type of this visitor that I, I see everything and more under the rainbow, dude. It's, it's like beings that look just like us, eight foot tall. There's like these uh, reptilian ones that people report. This is throughout history, right? Um, there's the mantis looking ones. There's the tall grays, the short grays. I mean, I, I was told by, by people who, who I trust have more knowledge than me that there is a cacophony of life out there just outside of our earth. And every type of kind of thing that could be created with biology has been created. And, and, and some are more advanced than others. And some likely are visiting here. Uh, I mean, so there's the Betty and Barney Hill case, which is really powerful, incredible. If you really understand why, um, that, that, how that came out, why it came out. I find that to be a very, very credible case with physical evidence and, and radar and all this stuff. Travis Walton. And that would be my second one is Travis Walton. And he has this incredible account. Look, his friends were looking at going to jail. They thought they, that, that they killed him when he was missing. And he was missing for a number of days. He pops back up. Now, not everything about Travis do I know to be true, but I that event is the most kind of fascinating as one that I would say you should really look at. Travis Walton, Betty and Barney Hill. But I mean, I get, there are things that repeat themselves. So like even Bob Lazar, if you go back to like kind of my gateway drug into UFOs was this guy, Bob Lazar. So I, I made this movie, Bob Lazar, Area 51 and Flying Saucers. And I'm, I'm proud of that movie because for me, it took many years, but what it was, was me trying to get to the truth on this. Is this guy a liar or is he telling it as it is? Uh, I can tell you now, I know that he is telling it as it is. Mm -hmm. What he's saying to you is accurate, correct, and true. It happened to him. Yes. Um, the speculation that it was aliens who <coughs> built the pyramids, yeah. who did built Stonehenge. Who... We talked about that on the last episode. Yeah. I remember I'm kind of like not as knowledgeable in that or don't feel like you know I speak from personal um, opinion. But I, I will say this, even without the ancient history, modern day history, George Knapp and I did an episode on weaponized. He got this guy who wrote um, The Day After Roswell. And it was an old timer who checked out and he did have the roles he did. And he said he seeded our industry with technology from the UFOs. That I really was, believe that. Yeah, that was his claim. Now, the thing is, we can look at modern day. We know our United States government with a joint allied group of foreign materials program called the five eyes foreign materials program are reverse engineering UFO technology. We know they are doing that. So now there's, there's a supportive document and I mean, the, look into that foreign materials program from the five eyes, right? So if we are reverse engineering and the DIA is reverse engineering this shit and other corporations like Lockheed Martin are and, BAE and all these companies, if they're doing it, then they are definitely getting derivative technologies to bring even into the skins of our stealth craft or whatever. So they're doing it now. We can look to the pyramids. It's being done now. You know, what you do is you get loud. You ask questions. You ask for reports. Um, you know, if you find somebody that's got something really interesting, send it to me. If you know people in the military that are having encounters and, you know, they, they can, I am... I am able to receive anything from anybody. So what people can do is they can talk about it. They can normalize it. They can reduce the stigma. And most importantly, they can just pay attention. If you pay attention with an open mind, you'll see what's going on 
it is deep what's happening. And so I think that's the number one thing. We need to bring this into pop culture in a way where we're having the right conversation. All right. Yeah. Well, dude, 